Thing. Looks like it's time to get started with our programming. Okay. So, <laughs> no, I'm, no, I'm Jason. Sorry to bring you off to such a, um, uh, not, you know, uh, uh, my apologies. <laughs> no We're worries. just happy to have you here. We're just happy you're here. Oh, so, my gosh. Yes, this is Jason I... Kudner of Beagle Board. And we'll pass it off to you. Yeah. Great. Um yeah, my apologies for being um, late and 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 um, it dropped the kid off at school. Completely forgot today was show and tell day, but that <laughs> does not mean I don't have great and fun things to show off because um, I definitely do. Um, so um, so BeagleBoard, um, we've been making open hardware single board computers now for you know um, you know some odd fifteen years. So this is. Uh, um, started out for me as kind of a, um, a little a side gig when I worked for Texas Instruments. And it's grown into a um, just um, uh, just an amazing experience. Um, you know, we've sold millions of, of boards now. Sold is kind of a, a little bit odd. We're actually a, a, entirely a nonprofit. Um, so... The, the foundation, the BeagleBoard.org Foundation, exists entirely as a, as a nonprofit, and all of the designs that we create, um, we produce as a open source uh, hardware, um, and then we license the logo to manufacturers, um, most notably Seed Studio, um, makes most of our hardware. We're mostly known for this guy right here, which is the, the BeagleBomb Black, right? So um, that's kind of been the the, the, the main one, but we've we've recently um, um, connect things with that. I've got a very messy desk, right? So <laughs> so much hardware on here. Um, it's kind of hard to um, um, always always working on um, designing more hardware. Um, you know where we can, we try to do things in in, in KiCad and open source tools as well, but. Um, um, we'll leverage uh, Allegro, um, and um, um, we've also used uh, the Fusion 360, what's, what's the Eagle, right, that we can all get lumped into Fusion. Um, but we've got, um, can I share my screen? That's probably good. Let's do that. Um, share screen. And I'm going to do that. Share. So if you if you go to the, the the BeagleBoard website, that's probably the best way to kind of find um, out all the cool stuff um, that we've designed. If you go on any of the boards, we, we've dived into Raspberry Pi compatibles, right? So this is in a, a Raspberry Pi five form factor, um, and this has actually been pretty liberating building up a, a, um, a design in that form factor, right? We certainly haven't given up the you know, the, the, the Beagle Bone um, form factor, which has a lot more I.O. on it, and I think is nicer for building some uh, deeply embedded things. Um, but um, being able to just kind of go in, and grab off-the-shelf products that people have kind of figured out their ways around, um, you know, the Raspberry Pi form factor, um, and being able to drop things into that um, has been pretty liberating. It's been pretty easy to kind of pick up projects and and uh um to build from for that i do um I, a lot of the, the the hardware designs right a lot of this stuff is my um wish stuff so that i can go and do um you know professional development right so we'll design these little little computers that uh, i will go and use personally to to design into um other projects a lot of it's like iot monitoring stuff but um um, you know, some of the funner stuff is um, robotics. Um, and so the, 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 the Beagle Y AI is in a Raspberry Pi 5 form factor, um, but it brings some accelerators in it uh, for doing neural network stuff. Um, and we've got an open stack so that you can actually go and program the DSPs that, you know, all the way at the lowest levels to, for um, actually you know, programming the inference engine. And then there's R5 um, microcontrollers in there as well for kind of the real time low latency stuff. Um, and then if you go if you go onto the site, you'll see the documentation links, um, which will take you to. This is all um, 
um, you know, generated that. You see, we've got the, the open source hardware logo, um, and um, that will take you over to the, the to the to the Oshawa page. Um, but then you can also get to the the design, so you can get all of this is um, managed through a um, our own um, I'm not logged in um, our own um, uh, GitLab instance, right? So all you, all the the documentation um, and all the board designs um, are managed through GitLab instance. Um, I click this edit; it didn't log me in, but you don't actually have to be logged in to go start exploring the projects. Um, so if we look, um, we explore, you can see the, a, a number of different software projects, um, and we should be able to search for boards and to find the different board designs. But the, we, we do mirror things up on, on, uh, GitHub as well. Um, but all the board designs, um, this is kind of the harder way to get to it. Let me just go back um, to the website. So you get into the documentation. You can look at the, the source and all the edit, all the, the, the documentation of the boards. You can also go to the design files. Um, so here there's actual the, the design materials. Um, this one, unfortunately, was a bit complicated. So it's done in um, Allegro. Um, so you'll see the, the, the Allegro schematic file and the BRD files um, there for the for the actual um, design. Um, now, we primarily leverage uh, TI chips. You know, I spent um, almost 30 years working for, for TI. Um, so using their chips has been a focus, but we're also really interested in um, RISC-V um, especially. And so we've, we've done RISC-V boards um, with um, other chip manufacturers. Um, the most most popular one here is an FPGA based board in the the BeagleBone form factor. Um, this is a microchip uh, FPGA with the um, um, RISC five cores, um, and then it has a um, a flash based FPGA fabric. And so we've kind of done some some interesting things with our um, our um, the our GitLab instance. So GitLab is kind of like GitHub, but we we run um, on the open source um, um, GitLab, uh, and we have our own instance. They're they're at Open Beagle, and um, so we do some fun things. So instead of having to install the proprietary tools for um, the microchip FPGA, um, uh, which you can do, and you can use that for 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 free for targeting this board. Um, um, but we provide a continuous integration so that you don't have to install them. Um, so, you know, we'll let you just fork the design. Um, so if you go into the, the documentation page for that, look at some of these demos, right? You can customize the, the gateware um, in Verilog. And um, we sponsor um, a Google Summer of Code projects over the summer, so the internships. Um, so, um, if you look at our our GSOC page, this is where a lot of the focus for the BeagleBoard project really comes every year. Um, you know, we, we bring in the, the interns and teach them about doing open source um, software. Um, and, you know, we're just starting to venture into um, open source hardware at the um, FPGA level. Um, so one of the projects that we had this last year uh, doesn't have the 2024, but we actually um, worked with a student to design a CPU core, RISC-V CPU core, um, geared at doing um, low latency I/O, so really, um, um, you know, optimized for um, bit operations on I/O pins um, in a RISC-V core. Um, gosh, so much going on with Beagle all the time. Um, so I'm tr talking fast, but I should probably slow down. I don't know if we if we have an opportunity on on um, on this show and tell to do some any type of Q and A, um, but the, the the kind of the main boards um, you know we're we're focused on right now are the like the Beagle YAI, which is in this Pi five form factor, and then you, you know, maybe something like the the um, RISC five boards um, with the FPGA, and that's where kind of most of the focus is going on. This is a much higher performance RISC five board. 
um, that's um, built on essentially a, a, a mobile phone um, chip, more or less. Um, but it's got um, an AI engine and um, um, lots of cores and high-end GPU um, in it. Um, there's also the Beagle Play, which comes to the long-range, low-power wireless for talking to our first microcontroller board, which is the Beagle Connect Freedom. Um, yeah. The random thing showing on my desk, this is a little a backpack, right, for the, the Beagle Connect Freedom. Um, gives it a battery and turns it into long-range, low-power wireless um, remote control. Um, gosh. Um, I, yeah. I would, um, you know, so you, you pop back on for a second when I asked if there could be any questions, but then uh, I think I <laughs> just, just kept on talking. <laughs> Yeah, we could we could have a, a little Q and A session um, if people want to put comments in uh, on the YouTube channel. Just drop in a comment, and we will relay them. It's true. Uh, we will uh, relay any questions that come in. And uh, just a quick response here for MC Sailing. Yes, the fax machine does actually work. We did we get did some faxes. Get some faxes. Faxes. Oh my God. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, you can fax us. We got this um, Hack the Planet fax from uh, Andy. Andy. So, Andy Kutmeyer <laughs> from Dino Labs. So, um, Hack yeah. Hack Planet. Fax us, ask questions. <laughs> I love it. Stream. <laughs> um, so now, now, now the, the thing would be to do actually build a fax machine, right? Because that looks like it's just a, a, an old one. I wonder if this is just an ancient guy. He does the trick, mm. but building a fax machine machine from scratch would be interesting. That would be really fun. That would be really cool. You know, because uh, I've been um, doing a lot with cellular modems, um, and I think it might be kind of fun um, to like do it in audio, right? Right. That's kind of the point, right? Oh, you don't yeah. want to. That'd be really so, cool. So actually get a voice connection, you know, transmission, right? So data over voice over data. So yeah, like, there's <laughs> a really great episode of, uh, of the secret life of machines where they make fax machines. <laughs> and if, uh, okay. if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. It's really, really good. They, they kind of uh, make like a super lo-fi fax machine. I love it. It's um, yeah. It's so the, the the trick is like like you know because everything once you like you, you snap a picture on your phone right it's instantly digitized right so how do you turn it back into so turning your digitized images back into audio mm -hmm. um, for in a, in a digital way that's uh, I don't I, I like that idea. Um, <laughs> somebody said messy desks are okay so um, ignore the precursor phone but there's my. <laughs> My, my Beagle Y, um, which is currently um, sending, uh, being used to um, massage data signals for Beagle Connect Freedom um, that's being used in a, um, an IoT project, right? That's um, like, um, it's, it happens to be monitoring stuff in restaurants, but um, it's, um, yeah, my little, my, I, I, I definitely um, eat your own dog food type of, guy wherever I can be right so um so the beagle beagle Y makes the perfect kind of tool for quickly building up test benches for um for other products where it doesn't actually necessarily go in them oh slow down Jason ah I'm just I was just so wound up because I didn't remember the, to do this this morning um and I, I feel awful um no this is great I mean like yeah you're giving all kinds of good info and yeah, we could take some questions. If anyone has any, uh, drop them in the chat and we will relay them. We will relay them. <laughs> <laughs> so is, well, the, uh, is the BeagleBoard AI, is this the, um, the most recent board y'all are working on? Yeah, this is the most recent one is the BeagleY um, AI and it's, um, um yeah it, it, it's 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 the focus um at the moment we're still doing um like like current work in progress right we're doing another pocket beagle um mm -hmm. so in the in the same pocket beagle form factor but with the newer processor um on it 
Um, and so we certainly haven't um, stopped doing Beagle, Pocket Beagle and Beagle Bone um, Black, right? So we're going to do um, working on more revisions on Beagle Bone Black um, as well. Um, but yeah, the Beagle Y being in the, the Raspberry Pi form factor, right? And we're just trying, that was a, that was a hard one for me to decide to, to go ahead and, and do. It's like, well, we have our own form factor. Why do we need to do anything um, in a, in a, in a pie form factor? What does that say to, um, um, to our community? So it took me a while to kind of like listen to folks and say, okay, you know, it's actually really of some value to do things in, in the, in the pie form factor when you're doing these single board computers. Um, and I, I'm actually really proud of the job we did. Um, because it's it's a lot um, closer um, to the Pi Five form factor than a lot of the other um, kind of Pi likes that are out there. Um, you know, I think we did a, a really nice job at keeping the connectors in the same place. Um, the I, I don't like the onboard an antennas. Um, so this is one um, kind of glaring you know, exception to some extent, but because it's a, a fly lead antenna, you can kind of swivel it and put it where you want. Um, um, but it um, um, gives you a lot better reception um, performance than, than using like onboard chip antennas. Um, when you're, you're building building out a lot of things, it's just, it's just nice to have that um, upgradable uh, antenna. Um, it, it does... Um, so, you know, a few things, like we decided to go ahead and put um, uh, four um, super speed uh, USB threes on there instead of just doing um, the two and two. Um, you know, it's got a, a compatible fan, but, you know, we run pretty well fanless. Um, it's got the only, um, so it's got the, the CSI and DSI connections, but it also has an OLDI for like really low cost displays. Um, really low cost embedded displays. Um, we're venturing into the, the, the module space. We've made the, 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 the Wi-Fi module ourselves. So you can, um, what's, what's on the facts? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, but, oh, sorry. We did have a fresh fax come in to whom it may concern. <laughs> and then a, we've got a series of coins here. Um, can't say the fax is the best quality fax <laughs> we I've are ever received. That the thermal printer is trying hard, really doing its. Oh, oh and then we also got um, some war surplus ads. <laughs> war surplus instruments, radio cameras. You you can get a chronometric. Tachometer uh, for nineteen seventy five. <laughs> what a deal! What a deal! Uh, December 1950. Wow, what a great time to buy electronics. You could get a movie camera for 29.75. Wow, bring it back. <laughs> now we do have uh, some questions here. We have Arthur yeah. is asking, uh, why does Open WRT run on dedicated Banana Pie hardware and not BeagleBoard? Uh, yeah, I wish I could tell you. You'd have to ask the Open WRT folks. Um, <laughs> you know. We, we try hard to support the um, uh, the like Arago project, um, you know, and the the um, uh, build route, right? So um, a lot of these, you know, specialized distros like Open WRT, um, you know, I think that they would be pretty happy getting with the support they get from um, from BeagleBoard and the BeagleBoard community. So yeah, I think it's a really good question, but unfortunately, not being part of WRT, I couldn't answer that. Uh, we also have one from Andy over at Digital Naturalism Labs. We've got, what advantage are there of a beagle bone in, uh, in an in, in a, a pie form factor instead of just a regular bone? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the, the, we're kind of bringing the things that, that, that Beagle's known for, which is um, um, open source hardware um, being one, I, I, it's it's surprising to me how many people don't realize that a Raspberry Pi is not open hardware, um, right? So you get like a PDF schematic, uh, limited PDF schematic, and like no layout files. 
Um, and more fundamentally, it, with the with the Raspberry Pi, you can't actually buy the chips, right? Broadcom, like for a while, there was, um, you know, the OMX folks um, who I love, right? They do open hardware. They do it the right way. Um, the the OMX folks were looking at doing stuff with the Broadcom chip, right? And then Broadcom stopped, wouldn't sell them the chips, right? So, um, and, and yeah, that's just kind of, you know, difference in how we think about how you should approach um, the um, people with, with building electronics, right? It, it, it should be, you're, you're building off of this, so why shouldn't what you be building off be as open as possible, right? And and that's not, um, you know, necessarily something that's core to the, to the Raspberry Pi folks, and I love the things that they've done to teach people about computing, but, um, you know, sometimes you want to go further, and it matters that you're building on something that's uh, open. Um, so the fact that it's open source is a, a, a really big one. Um, other things that, that, you know, from a the Beagle world is um, um, we work with chips that are readily available that you can buy through distribution, right? So you, so you can actually build off of it. And that, you know, is, you know, the folks at, at Texas Instruments build chips that are designed for industrial environments, right? So industrial applications. And that means that they put in things to handle uh, real-time computing, right? So there are five microcontrollers here running at 800 megahertz um, so that, you know, you're not toggling GPIO pins, uh, you know, on a Linux system, right? It, it's, um, it, 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 it always, uh, I, I do love the the Python like learning process and you know people getting to, to GPIOs and, and and things and we try to make those sort of things easy but you you probably find out real fast if you're actually trying to do much real time control and bit banging things and that you get further if you were just on a microcontroller without all the when all the the massive stuff of, of of software in the way but. Linux really does solve a lot of problems for you, right? Networking stacks and and just like you know packages of thousands and thousands of open source tools and high level programming languages, right? So we combine all that the both worlds, right? The the ability to actually have real time I/O and the ability to run high level operating system stuff on here, right? So um, one of the like right now I'm doing these uh, weekly hacking sessions where we're programming the R5 and Zephyr, which is a real-time operating system, um, and even putting MicroPython on the, the R5 cores, um, and then, you know, of course, running Linux on the, um, the, the, the quad-core um, processor. Uh, I worry that I'm invading the next person's time, right? I don't want to step on anybody else's time. Oh, no, absolutely. You... You've you, got 10 minutes left. You've got 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so so Beagle brings um, open hardware. Beagle brings real time um, and, um, you know, the AI stack, right, on here, um, being able to, to run um, TensorFlow Lite um, in an accelerated way and doing it on DSPs that are actually programmable um, rather than just something that's kind of hidden um, Right, is a lot of that, right? So it's building off of um, industrial parts that people can actually use to, to customize and build real things out of. And um, now you can, if you want to buy these and put them in something great, but you can also go and build them yourself. I think it's really important for professionals that, that want to want to try to build something that they're not going to, if you want to customize it, it's possible. Yeah, definitely. That's. I feel like that's a huge part of the community on a whole. Being able to customize is very important. Uh, we also have a question coming in from Kyle, who is wondering, what project are you most excited about working on using a Beagle board? Um, gosh, so um, you get excited about so many different things. And um, um, so, and, and I don't we'll hold you to one to thing, start. you know. <laughs> I can't, let's, let, let's, not, let's not do the one thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Some of your favorite things that are most, but maybe not the most exciting. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so there's a lot going on with the the uh, Beagle Five Fire for um, space applications, um, oh, and and there are um, satellite networks today built off of the existing BeagleBone Black, and then uh, uh, oh you know let that register for a minute. I mean satellite networks, like. Thousands of satellites in the sky based on beagle blacks. That's already. wild. <laughs> and um, and and there's a lot of work going into um, like like people building um, you know space uh, projects out of uh, the Beagle Five uh, fire, right? So it's a really robust FPGA. Um, and like I was, I really enjoyed the the. Um, I love when the, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory built a Europa prototype rover out of a BeagleBone Black, right? And I, I actually just caught it on a National Geographic special and a few seconds in, it's like, hey, that's my board. <laughs> <laughs> that was and, um, Yeah, that's, that's wild. <laughs> um, and, and so they, it was a prototype for Europa rover and they were taking it under the Arctic ice and driving it under the, the, the Arctic ice. Mm. Um, and, um, you know, the, the people building, uh, controls for speed trains. Um, <laughs> um, I, love the train. I, I was a little worried. About, so this is not one I, I, I worked on at all, but I was, uh, you know, when, when somebody says that they're working on a, autonomous, um, air, uh, personal flight vehicles, um, and using, using Beagle Bones for, um, uh, for for doing the autonomous flight, and I've, I've, sometimes that stuff makes me a little nervous, right? You know, but it's up in space and it's not going to necessarily <laughs> run into anybody or drop any any people. I feel a little bit better about it, but um, yeah, that one was that one was fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, this the stuff I kind of work on is probably a bit more mundane, right? So, like, I use I use a lot of the the Beagle Connect freedoms um and just like random monitoring stuff um and like I, i'm really excited about the stuff we're doing to kind of simplify at talking to sensors um right working with the the microbus uh clipboards that they've got like 1500 different sensor boards right and making it where you don't need to actually write any software to go and um talk to those sensor boards you can just leverage the Linux kernel um, drivers that are already there to go and do some of that stuff. But uh, so, so a lot of the stuff I do is a lot more um, mundane where like I'm, I'm just capturing some sensor data and sending it up to the, some, some, some cloud application. Um, actually, got a, question, um, a good question here from, uh, from James, mm -hmm. just when, uh, when they were using it for outer space applications, did they request any modifications or did you reach out to them maybe to like, see if they needed anything or needed any help? With the project or improvements? Yeah, um, uh, some some not aware like that. Like nobody came and specifically asked me for for modifications for the space applications. Um, you know what we have been asked for is building industrial versions. So we have an industrial version, so it's like an industrial temperature range uh, for the Beagle Mon Black, um, right? So if you if you look at the list of boards, right? There's um, um, Beagle Mon Black Industrial, which is red. Uh, <laughs> you can at least tell that it's a different board, um, but it's like just like it. So extended temperature um, range. Um, you know, at some points we've done uh, things with conformal coating. Um, you know, but and you know, and lots of people have asked us to drop different connectors on things, like so, um, um, so that they can just kind of wire up to things themselves. Um, instead of having the connectors on it, but um, mostly I think it's all just been about in, you know characterization and redundancy um, in using in space, right? So um, it, you know what you what you really won't get from a lot of the folks putting them in space is what really is that reliability data that seems to be their own proprietary <laughs> information that like you can you can talk all about the software, the operating system, and and but when you actually want to get to those reliability numbers, that's their um, that's their special sauce. Um, 
I, I did want to talk, when I talk about like real favorite things, and I so I've been um, chatting with a number of people about um, kind of legacy free computing, um, right? So getting to like the just a um, a single code base that does bootloading all the way up into like GUI applications um, that's actually like one person can understand. I think honestly, when I think about what's the most exciting for me, what are things that I actually get up and like motivate me for the day? It's, it's, it's kind of that there's different, um, different ways. I think you can kind of refer to legacy free computing, but it, it's something that lets you do what you really do on a computer every day without having to depend on stuff that you just don't understand. Um, and so when you talk about soothing, um, I've been playing around the, 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 the programming language crystal, um, for part of that. And like, that's, that's what I do when I just need some, 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 some downtime. It's just, uh, um, kind of play with building my own operating system, building my own, um, uh, computing environment that I think other people might potentially be able to understand. Um, just with a single programming language. So that's the soothing one. Um, radiation yeah, concern with open hardware and space. Absolutely, there's radiation concern with hardware and space. I, I, a lot of it, you just kind of solve with a, a Faraday cage, right? A lot of these are going up in like the the, the one U CubeSats, right? So it's a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter form factor, kind of standardized. Like it, it these days, like with um, you know, crowd, crowd, well, like, you know, you, it's become much cheaper, kind of like shuttle wafers. Like you, if you want, you can get free silicon made today, right? You can actually design a chip and actually have it manufactured and, and, and get it back through kind of group efforts through like shuttle wafers. Um, and similar possibilities are available for you to actually launch things into space. And please, if you're really interested, um, do reach out to me on Discord and, and other uh, communication channels. Email, I'll probably miss. Um, I try to make my calendar actually available to people. Um, so if you go to the BeagleBoard website, you can um, um, you can actually get a schedule a meeting with me. Um, but if you're interested in making your own silicon or, or putting a board into space, there are ways that you can essentially do that for, for free. Um, but a lot of the protection just comes from like shielding um, in the the um, uh, you know in the in a in a cage um, and um, uh, yeah and redundancy or, or kind of understanding the failure modes. Um, frequent question: How did we come up with the name um, uh, BeagleBoard? Right. So um, when we started BeagleBoard, um, it was um, uh, my idea, but the the first guy that I that um, well, Joe came to me over a lunch break and said, like, how do we go and and reach um, you know reach more developers, right? From a from a TI standpoint, right? And um, you know, I said, it well, we just need to go and focus on the open source uh, community. And this is kind of before there was really solidified open hardware community, um, and um, so. Um, I kind of did the specifications and Gerald did the design work. He did the hard um, design work for um, the early beagles. And um, he had a dog named Jake, um, which was a beagle. And he just like, well, every project deserves a code name. And he just had beagle board there as the internal code name. And I just said, I love it. I, I like the name beagle board. They're, 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 I love beagles. Um, and why, why do we have to come up with a, a, um, a name that, um, you know, tries to, I, I, I really don't like all the, the, the TI project names and, and coming up with, uh, um, yeah. So, and, and it, it, it kind of led to a lot of other name alike projects, um, at TI and then outside, um, where it was all just animalboard.org stuff. Um, but, um, um, yeah, there was a, a cute dog named Jake. Um, now the, the <laughs> official, the official mascot's name, however, is Boris. Um, oh, it's really, that's yeah. important information. Because, <laughs> <laughs> um, because Boris, um, um, was the name chosen, like, it sounded like bored apparently, but, um, that was the name that the guy that drew the mascot, like he came up with, right? So. 
His name was Boris. So that's the name of the mascot. But Boris was inspired by Jake. Amazing. Amazing. Well, um, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, this comes up to the end of your segment. If you wanted to leave um, the viewers of our live stream with any one message, do you have anything you'd like to share? Um. Yeah, just um, I'd say if you're on Discord, which a lot of folks are, come talk to our Discord and interact with the community. Um, and if you're looking for a board to play with, I'd recommend the Beagle YAI, right? So if, you're, if you do stuff with the Raspberry Pi, it should be really easy for you um, to get started with, um, right? There's a, we leverage the great work of um, the, the folks over at uh, the Gadget Toy to, to make a pinout diagram to make it really easy to get started programming the IOs on a, on a Beagle YAI. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jason. And Bye. Thanks for the time. <laughs> we'll Sorry see. for the late start. <laughs> no, that's amazing. It's so good. We have our next 